think of the Great Lakes, you may not expect this. These photographs of magnificent towering waves weren't taken in the Pacific or the Atlantic. They were taken at Lake Erie. The thing that I find amazes a lot of people that aren't familiar with them is the sheer size of them. I've been with lots of people that for the first time when they're seeing them, they're like, really, this isn't an ocean? Dave Sanford is a professional photographer from Ontario, Canada. To do his work, Sanford waits for the perfect weather conditions heading out into fierce winds and ice-cold water to make his masterpieces. Lake Erie is in the most southern part of Ontario. It's the smallest of the Great Lakes. As far as the depth goes, it's the shallowest by far. Being a, a large lake, but, but relatively shallow compared to the other Great Lakes, uh, creates unique wave conditions. The waves on Lake Erie tend to be closer together with a lot more of the violence on the white water on top. There's a lot of people that have lost their lives on Lake Erie. There's been estimated somewhere over 8,000 shipwrecks on Lake Erie over the years. At her worst, Lake Erie can be murderous. In fact, when she's murderous, we call her a widow maker. To be a nature photographer, I think that one of the number one things you have to have is patience. The first wave photo that I posted from Lake Erie, I came home that night and I posted an image and right away, the number of comments on it, it was crazy compared to what I normally would get, and the number of likes. <laughs> if I know I'm going in the water, it starts from like the moment I wake up in the morning. There's a lot of mental preparation. It is an adrenaline rush too, for sure. Like I have no idea how things are going to unfold. It's before the sun's even coming up and you can see the water in the distance and, and those waves exploding into the air and it's, it's just such a cool rush. The window of opportunity to photograph the lakes for, for me is generally from maybe mid-October through early December. It's the best time of the year when you still have that warm air masses that are around this region and then those cold air masses that are coming from up north that give you these really prime conditions. Obviously weather changes and it's constantly changing. The biggest factor is wind speed and wind direction. A southwest wind is the best and minimal wind speeds I'm usually looking at around 30 miles an hour at the bare minimum. At the high end of it um, you're actually getting into category one hurricane level winds um, over 70 miles an hour. It's a crazy mess of water and that's when you're getting these waves that are upwards of 30 feet. The tough thing about lake waves is it's not like ocean waves where you have sets that come in and then there's a bit of a lull. Lake waves are constantly pounding. You know, you virtually have like two seconds, two and a half seconds between each wave. And where I'm at, it's more like a giant washing machine. It's not easy. You're kind of cold after a while too. That water is only around the 50 degree mark. There's days where there's ice in the water and you're literally like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, Water is very powerful, it's very deceiving, and, and you have to have great respect for it. You can get pulled under and pulled out with a rip current. It's obviously a lot stronger than you are. You have to know your limitations and, and know when to say when. The waves that are generated from this refraction off the pier, those are the waves that I'm photographing, that where you have you know, two masses of water, two waves that are moving in, in opposite directions that are meeting and colliding and they actually, they'll hit and they twist and they turn and, and it's, it's a phenomenal thing to see. It's just building this massive liquid mountain that literally 
lasts all of like a second, if that, you know? Sometimes it's, it's a fraction of moment in time. And that's one of the things that I love is the challenge of capturing that moment. Dave Sanford's Liquid Mountain photographs have appeared in several online publications, including the Washington Post. He also sells prints on his website. I guess one of the things that I really hope is that my photos can allow people to appreciate what they have as far as nature goes and, and learn to love it and cherish it and embrace it and protect it. Thank you.